you may have heard of a card by the name of Stormcrow. You may have also cringed at the sound of that name, but whether you're a longtime player of Magic the Gathering or someone entirely new to the game, you may or may not have heard of this card before. If you haven't, you have heard of it now. I've played this game for well over a decade and have never, ever heard of a card quite nearly as frequently as I've heard of Stormcrow. It has almost a cult following within the game, and out of sheer morbid curiosity, I wanted to find out what the fuss was about. So let's check out what I found. The origins of the Stormcrow cult can be traced back to the Alliance's set. Printed alongside of this powerful creature was the almighty force of will as well as diminishing returns. And because of this huge amount of power given to just blue magic in one set, it was seen as a bad idea to play any other color. Why play green, red, black, or white magic when blue has access to such powerful cards? The phrase is, alliances broke blue, and force of will makes any random blue card better than any other card in the game, circulated frequently during this time. As a response, people began to joke that Stormcrow must be the absolute most broken card ever because one, it was blue, and two, it was printed in alliances. It's really as simple as that, it's just an overhyped derpy card that never really died out. But let's take a look at what you're getting with this broken birdie. For just two mana, two mana, bam, a blue mana and a mana of whatever color you want gives you this all-powerful 1-2 flying bird. Your opponent won't want to waste their precious counters on this hidden threat and that will give you the edge you need to unleash unholy apocalypse on them. It can untap once per turn for absolutely free. How could you want any more value than that out of a creature? Forget your stupid one-drop elves, this thing can fly over any of those land-dwelling simpletons. This can also block any 1-1 one -one and kill it while still living to fly another day. The best part is, it's pauper legal. You can't get that off the dollar menu at McDonald's. In fact, you really can't get anything that awesome off of the dollar menu at McDonald's. The McDouble, my old favorite burger at McDonald's, used to be there as the dollar version of the double cheeseburger, but nowadays you can't get any double patty burger off the dollar menu. What's up with that? I want a double cheeseburger. That's like $1.49 each. I'm a poor college graduate. How am I supposed to survive off of that? Oh, there's the McDouble that I could get for a dollar, right? Pfft, no, I have to scratch up 19 more cents for McDouble. Your single slice of cheese is worth 30 cents, McDonald's. You gotta be that stingy with your stinky cheese. Well, forget you. I'll go to Burger King for my McDoubles and we'll see what they got a little off track there. Let's do a quick little deck tech featuring the McDouble Crow. This is a powerful deck that can be put together for less than a hundred dollars and is quite amazing if I do say so myself. Starting off, we will need a playset of Keldeo EX. This card is the ability to come into play without any cost. And even better, for every island in play, you'll be able to do 20 more damage when it attacks. That is insane. If you only run islands, which we do, this card will automatically deal 110 damage when it starts to swing in. Come on. Next up, to help us ramp into those islands, we run a pair of Blastoise. This guy has the ability to let us drop as many islands as we want per turn, and he has the powerful ability, like Keldeo, to increase his power for the more islands we have. Next up, we run a few copies of Jirachi EX. This little fella can help us look for a sorcery from our deck when added to our hands. We also can tap down opponent's creatures whenever our Jirachi EX attacks. It's a blue control deck, what more do you want? We follow that with a pair of Shaman EX. When you cast it, you can draw up until you have six cards in your hand. That's pure value. Step aside, Treasure Cruise. We got us a Shaman here. A pair of Execute can be used as a repeatable discard. We can return it to our hand if it's in our graveyard at any point. And lastly, we run a single copy of a Kirim. This guy is nuts. He lets us ping an opponent's creature for 30 damage after we deal combat damage and it's blizzard burn will usually wipe out anything it attacks into. We run a few sorceries to round out our deck. Let's talk about some of the key ones. Archie's Ace in the Hole, which will let us return any blue card to the field, and then lets us draw five cards. What the heck are you thinking playing any other color? Battle Compressor lets us ditch three cards into the grave. We can dump the things that we want to return to the field later, and it thins out our deck. This is only at a common level as well. What the heck? The last key card we'll be talking about is Rough Seas. Once per turn, we can give 30 toughness back to a creature that's been already dealing damage. This can make our board nearly indestructible. I like it. 
Our mana base is very simple. 12 islands is all we need. If you don't like it, go hide in a mountain somewhere. That's going to do it for this lovely little deck tech on our all-powerful Storm Crow. If you've stuck with us this far, let me thank you all so much for 400 subscribers on this channel. Wow. I do promise we do have some more serious videos along the way. And if you're new to the channel and this is your first Planeswalker project video, I welcome you to our weird little corner of the internet. And I hope you consider becoming a subscriber today. And with that, I will see you all in the next video. If you'll excuse me, I have to finish buying out all the foil copies of Stormcrow on TCG Player. Ha 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 ha.